Hello, my name is Brad. I'm with the Canada Mason Design Centre. And today I'll quickly walk you through the process of designing a shear wall using Masonry Analysis Structural Systems, or MASS. So when you get to the welcome screen, you click on Create New Shear Wall, and this is the screen that it will take you to. We have our inputs up here. The results will be shown down here, and all of the drawings will be shown in this area over here. So to get started, you see that we have the height and the total height that are shown in yellow. I'm just going to put a height in of 4 meters. And when I press Enter, it will draw a wall that is 3 meters long and 4 meters high. I can change this length. I will make this wall 2.2 meters long. And you'll see the drawing will be changed right away. Now the total height is a little bit confusing, but basically what this represents is the height of the wall that you're looking at. Um, and this number can be bigger than just what you see here. So for example, if this were the bottom story of a multi-story shear wall and you just want to look at the, at the loads that are going into the bottom story, let's say for example, if this was three stories, we'll put in 12 meters here. And basically all this does is tell the software that we're not looking at a squat shear wall and that this is just part of a larger system. So once you have the drawing here, you've put in your height and your length, what you can do now is go to the load stage. You'll see that this button lights up in red here. And then click on add load to put your first load. And I will put on a wind load, a lateral wind load of 75 kilonewtons. And this is a, applied at the top of the wall. Now if you watched our outer plane walls video, you might recall that the wall module designs per meter. The shear wall actually looks at the full section. So there's no per meter. You put in your entire section that you want to model. And then the software will look at that full section of wall. Now I'll put in another load, I'll make it a seismic load, and let's just make that 100 kilonewtons. And so both of these loads are applied at the top of the wall here. And then once we have some valid loads applied, you can click on the moment to design. And then once we do this, what it will do, cycle through different sizes and strengths of masonry unit, and then it'll arrive at a design where um, our moment resistance is bigger than our factored moment. You can see that with the different tabs here, this is where it loads. Reaction forces, our bending moment diagram, and our PM diagram, so you can see axial load being this axis and moment resistance being this axis. We're loaded within um, our allowable combinations of axial load and moment. So going back to the wall here, you can see that with this design, it designed it using a 15 centimeter unit, 15 MPA, and then one number 25 bar every 600 millimeters. And what it actually does is it puts a bar at each end of the wall and then works its way in 600 millimeters and then you can see this space is smaller but to make sure that that 600 millimeters is maintained it will just put a bar in the middle. So if I wanted to look at a specific configuration, let's say I use a larger unit, I can go up to a 20 centimeter by turning off the 15 and the 10 and it will redesign and now it's putting one number 25 bar every 1.2 meters. That's because I'm using the larger unit. So to see the results, there are two rows of tabs here, simplified and detailed. And then I can look at, for moment results, these are the simplified results. So basically a snapshot of what the designer might be interested in. But then if you wanted to get into the nitty gritty and look at all of the equations and everything, click on detailed while the moment is selected. And this actually loads all of the equations and everything that are used along with the references and what their values are. So I'll go back to simplified here. Once we have a successful moment design, You'll see this button here. This is our shear design button. This will become enabled once we have a successful moment design. And when I click on that, it will run through different combinations of bond beams and joint reinforcement until it comes up with a configuration that gives a successful result. So once again, with the simplified shear results, this just gives a snapshot of the information you might be interested in. It actually designs at every course, starting from the bottom to the top, looking at in-plane shear. And if you look at detailed, it actually will show you a uh, how that calculation is done. So it's a great teaching tool as well. And we're checking regular diagonal shear as well as sliding shear at every course. And then if you wanted to, let's say, use bond beams instead of joint reinforcement right now, the none box is highlighted, indicating that there are no bond beams in this wall. If I turn that off, basically I'm forcing the program to put bond beams in. It's putting a number 10 every 1200. Let's say I wanted to tighten up that spacing a bit. I could do that, put them every meter, for example. And then you can see the design gets changed right away. And when I add bond beams, you'll notice that joint reinforcement is long, no longer needed. If I wanted to put it in, I could just turn off the none option. But MASS will automatically, by default, try to get by with the smallest amount of steel that it can using the smallest and weakest masonry units to try and get a more efficient design. And you'll see the bearing design button never does become enabled. That is because um, the bearing stage is just for beam design. 
And so once you've got come to a successful shear design, you have completed the shear wall process and that's all there is to it. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to our channel to see more mass related videos.